Let's sing at a night. everybody welcome once again happy sunday hope you all are doing exceptionally great like i am my day has been great kind of um lazy-ish like in bed almost the entire day but it has been awesome because i've been listening to messages that are transforming my life and bringing change and bringing um transformation and all that so it has been awesome so far i don't know about you but God is extremely, extremely good. And as long as he's still seated on the throne, as long as he's still the king, as long as he's still reigning, you have no need to fear. You have no need to worry because he would do abundantly, exceedingly above all you can ask or think. Yes, that's what God is ready to do in your life. He will do much more than you can even ask, think or imagine. He wants to do greater than your abilities. He wants to do greater than your thoughts. He wants to do far greater than anything you've ever dreamed of. That's the God I serve. He's a faithful God. He's an authentic God. Oh, tell authentic God. Oh, 
Oh na na na, oh te o te tsinkaru. Oh na na na, oh te o te tsinkaru. Oh, oh na na na, oh te o te tsinkaru. Now you better know. Now you better know. Yes, that's the God I serve. So if you're just tuning in, it's a chapter a day of February program, Bible study program with Princess Clayton on my personal page. <laughs> it's green of hearts and laughter. And of course, today we're getting on with a chapter a day. And our um, um, Bible party is taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. And I don't know how many verses he has. We're going to find out. Let's find out. We're doing 2 Kings chapter 9. And of course, how was the chapter a day born? It was born out of the desire of wanting to go viral on social media. Yes, who doesn't like to go viral? Who doesn't like to put out a message that is blessing lots and lots of people? Is blessing tons and tons of people. Like people can't just help but watch. You know, who doesn't want to do that? I want to do that. As a content creator, I want to do that. As a child of God, I want to do that. As someone who loves to inspire people and be a blessing in her generation, I want to do that. You know, I want to come and see a message where I see billions and millions of people who have watched and they're giving testimonies of how the message impacted their lives, transformed their lives. So I wanted to do that. And I told God that I wanted to go viral, but I don't want to go the wrong way. I want to go the right way. So I want to go viral the God way. Because I've seen a lot of people just blow up, like their channels, their pages. I've seen some people just blow up like that. But what they have on their page is not something to write home about. It's not something that can be a plus to me. To me. To me. I'm talking about me here. Maybe it might be a plus to some other person, but it's not a plus to me and they just blow up. And I'm like, God, I don't want to blow up that way. I want to blow up. Yeah, sure. But not that way. I want to go the clean way, the right way. And so God says, do you really want to? Uh, yeah, I really, really want to. Do you really, really, really want to? Uh, yes, Lord, I really want to. And he says, okay, go start reading a chapter of the Bible every single day on Facebook. I'm like, oh. I wasn't ready for that. I was taken aback, people. I was so shocked to my bones. And I'm like, oh God, you gotta be kidding me this is a joke you want to play a prank on me right daddy i know this is just a prank and kind of you know it wasn't a prank it was real and that's why we're here today we started 2021 january 1st 2021 and we're here today this is how far we've come this is how far god has brought us and we're forever grateful we don't take it for granted we're really glad and excited and elated that god has honored us to be able to do this in these times, we're in the last days. And considering the fact that God is using me, I am super duper honored and I don't take it for granted. Because he could just as much as use any other person. So I, I really feel honored that he chose me out of the many people that are on planet Earth to do this. So I don't take it lightly. And on the chapter a day, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do. So that we can end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. Oh yeah. So today is going to be 2 Kings chapter 9. And it has 37 verses. And of course we're going to start with prayers. We'll hand over the session to God. After doing that we'll get on and. Um, we'll get on and then we'll pray for the. We'll get to the birthday party. We we'll pray for the birthday people and then we we'll get to the Bible party. The Bible party has two sections. We actually create an audio Bible as much as we study the Bible together. Hope you're ready for that. I'm sure you are. Ready or not, here I come. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for every amazing thing you've done in our lives, you're doing and you're still to do because in everything you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. So, Lord, we say thank you. We're grateful. We're forever excited that you are God and you love us so much. You are Father, always answering us, always preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the balanced diet you always give us. 
We thank you for always knowing that which we need and providing for us even when we do not even ask for. Lord, I pray that you're going to increase while I decrease. So it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this edition of a chapter a day today. Take preeminence. Take the wheel. I can't do this on my own. So, Lord, help me out. I desperately need your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So, today there's just one person in our birthday book. That's actually strange. But, well, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson is actually a music producer, a video producer, and he's a producer. Uh, a media producer. A media content producer. So, I got to meet him in Ghana. He's a very good person. Very nice. Very welcoming. Very friendly as well. And very funny, too. So, he's fun to be with. There's never a dull moment with him. We got to meet at, I think, an event. And then we became very good friends. And the friendship continued. We've not been able to communicate for a while because I don't know if it's his or mine that God had a problem first. I think my number had a problem first. And then we kind of lost contact. So we've not been able to contact each other again. I think we did once on Facebook. And then I don't know what happened to my Facebook account. It was hacked or something. I can't remember exactly. But we lost contact again. But he's a very, very amazing person. And he's the only one who is on our birthday book today. I don't know about those who were born today. If you're born today and I've not said happy birthday to you, please, for the love of God, just forgive me. Like, totally and completely forgive me. Okay? <laughs> I am so, so sorry. And I'm hoping and trusting that um, if you had already sent me your birthday and I forgot, I didn't record it, just forgive me. Send it again. Send it again to my inbox. Send it again and again and again. And put it under this, um, put it in the comment section of this message. So that I can be able to save it and put it clearly so that I can get to do it the next time. I won't forget the next time. We still have next year. This thing is going to run till next year. Because the Bible has 1,189 chapters. So it has to take us three years to get this done. Okay? So don't freak out would still get to your birthday if we if you think we've passed already we'll still come back to it in 2023 by the grace of god because we all are going to be here if christ starts to come that's by the ways which i so badly want him to come because <laughs> the way the world is going people it's freaking me out sometimes even though i'm a child of god okay so happy birthday mr anderson and god bless you let's get on with what we have for today we pray for the birthday people, every single person who was born today. And then we go ahead and uh, start up with a Bible party. Father, we thank you for this additional year. We thank you for all the people who were born today. Pray you bless them. Pray enlarge their coasts. We pray that you're going to open the windows of heaven and pour all the choices of your blessings upon their lives. And you're going to rebuke every devourer from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers in Jesus' name. Lord, you're also going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to guide their path. You're going to lead them aright. That they're not going to stray the path. They're not going to miss it. They're going to get it right all the time. Father, that you're going to cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, getting favor before God and before men. Their light is going to keep shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. And their gifts will make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to grant them opportunities that will cause them to stand out and not fit in because they were called to stand out in their areas of specialty. Lord, I pray that you're going to open their eyes to see and know those they're supposed to be destined to help us to. So they'll strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right. As much as you're also going to strategically place destiny help us all around their lives, oh God, so that when they also need help, help is going to be made available to them instantly. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause these ones to be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Let them be an overflow of the blessings that come upon their lives so that anyone who comes in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that the blessings are going to also 
and compass them as a shield round about so no weapon formed or fashion against them shall press by in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to be great people in their generations, O oh God, that they'll do great and mighty work, that they'll truly be that peop those people that will be a manifestation to the growing nation that is waiting. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to use them tremendously. When they get to a place as their fulfilling purpose, where they feel like they want to give up, they want to back out, like they can't do this no more, they feel like you're no longer with them, that they'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice, that will say, this is the way, walk down in it. You'll show them the path, you show them the right way, and you give them all that it takes to walk that path and walk it right. Thank you, Lord, because I know you always hear an answer. Whatever the lady your hands on, prosper it. Wherever they tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession. Teach them all that it takes to not only get to the top, but to get to the top and stay there permanently. Lord, that they will love you for the rest of your days. They will serve you for the rest of your days. Enlarge their coasts. Increase their bands, O oh Lord. Lord, that as they call on you, answer them and show them great and mighty things, which they've never, ever known. Father, perfect all that concerns them and give them a sound wonder and a six state, state of continuous laughter, singing and rejoicing, that they'll be able to rejoice, laugh, sing and dance all the way. And if it's to come, they'll be here same time next year, giving life testimonies of all the amazing and awesome things you've done in their lives. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you've heard and answered. Bless the works of their hands. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you've heard an answer. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessing meets blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Still, every prayer request for the blood of Jesus. We say thank you because we know you've already heard and answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, let it be so. Amen, 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 amen in their lives. Amen, as we have prayed. Amen, let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen in their lives. Amen, as we have prayed. Amen, let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen in their lives. Amen, let it be so. Amen. As we pray in the night, God bless you all tremendously. You all should be the head of another tail. God bless you, Scatter. Let's get right on with the Bible party. Ready or not, here I come. Second Kings chapter 9 and he has 37 verses. Is it 37 or 39? I think there are seven verses. Let's get ready. 2 Kings chapter 9. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in, and make him arise up from among his brethren, and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door, and flee, and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pieced against the wall, 
and him that is shut up and let left in Israel. And I'll make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and like the house of Bashar, the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake to he, spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew with trumpets, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, because of Hazael, king of Syria. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it be your mind, then let none go forth, nor escape out of the city, to go to tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram laid there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take an horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went on, there went one on horseback to meet him and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, what hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for the driveth, for he driveth furiously. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot, and they went out against Jehu and met him in the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the wardens of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? And Joram turned his hands and fled, and said unto Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow, with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms and the arrow went out of his heart and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, saith the Lord, and I'll requite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Jehu followed after him and said, Smite him also in the chariot, and they did also. And they did so at the going up to Gur, which is by Ebliam. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in a sepulcher with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, 
She said, Had Zimri peace? Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And then looked out to him, two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he throwed on and he throwed her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go, see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spake by the servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dunk upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say, uh, thanks be to God. Okay, so let's get on. This is actually um short startup. It's not long, it's a short one. <laughs> okay, so it's actually inter- interesting and very intriguing. So this is um, Elisha. He's supposed to go and, um, how do they call that again? Anoint the new king. They were always anointing the king. Whoever has to be king next needed to be anointed. So they were always anointing the king and all that. So he's supposed to go anoint the king. And this guy is literally scared. Like he's outright scared. Not not only just scared. Even the person he sent, he knew it was going to be a risky and a tricky thing. And he had to tell the person that I run. So there's some times that there are some things that... In as much as God wants us to go and do, we still need to be cautious. We need to be wise. We need to use every other technique that we have to use to make sure that we come out safe. We come out secure. You know, there are some things that you you just might have to use even a regular common sense. It's not like God must have to tell you, you know, it's not like that, like You'd have to use common sense. Common sense will tell you that, oh, this one run. This one, you have to stay there. This one, you have to do it this way. This one, you have to hide. This one, you don't have to fight this battle. It's not every dog that backs that you have to fight. Come on, you wear out. There are some dogs that, as they call it in my country, Ngong dog, they will back and back and back. They can do nothing. So you don't need to bother about them. You just need to keep going. You get? So this is Prophet Alicia. I'm telling this guy that, you have to go and anoint Jehu. But when you anoint him, run. <laughs> you see how the people had already even started saying that, oh, um, he's fake. And, uh, and I'm sure that's one of the reasons why God told um, Jehu to tell the servant that he should go and separate him from every other person. So whoever is going to be with after all, he's a captain, so definitely he will be with his team. He will be with his group members. So when you go, take him aside. Because just hear the people already saying, which madman is this? Imagine that they just kept getting all out, you know, telling um, um, Jehu that this man is a madman. What is he coming here to do? Why is Jehu even giving him audience and all that kind of thing? Jehu would have probably missed his ordination. Oh, Yes. So sometimes there will be people that will be with you that might make you miss some things. So God will need to separate you from those people. When it's time to separate from those people, separate all. Because another thing would have been that if he was not sensitive enough, he would have probably been like, these are my people, they're my team members, do whatever you have to do here. And he might miss it because the guy will not do it there. The, uh, the thing that he was told, the instruction was that, take him away from those people, anoint him and run. <laughs> so he did just that took him away when he first walked in and he spoke to them says who exactly are you talking to he says i'm talking to you you in particular says okay he left followed him and went to listen you need to be sensitive so you don't miss the hour of your visitation and then he went to him and told him everything that 
God had said how God was going to hand over the kingdom to him and how he was going to avenge the children of Israel and some of the kings that were killed and some of the people that were killed by Jezebel and Ahab's family and everything. So he came out. Um, so when he came out, he says, So they had to dis uh, they had to destroy the house of Ahab. Uh, I want to see. I want to see where he ran out. I want us to check that again. Okay, say, and the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door. See, some of these things will think that they'll forget them. No, they never forget them. God had started saying this from the time of Elijah and saying that dogs were going to eat Jezebel up. They had said it over and over and over. And it kept repeating and coming up and coming up and coming up. And so it was going to happen. So once have I spoken twice, have you heard? So if they speak two times, you've heard four times. If they speak three times, you've heard six times. It is serious for God to repeat something over and over and over. And so the guy finished doing that and then he fled. It says, and... And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehud came forth to the servants of the of his Lord. And one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto thee, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Can you imagine? Hear what they were already saying when he just came back. When he just came out, they said, whatever the man came to say is false because he's a madman. <laughs> That's one of the prophets of the Lord who brings the message from God. And you guys say he's a madman. Please never look down on anybody who brings a message for you. Receive the message and be open and be alert and be sensitive enough to know when is God speaking to you or not. Be alert, be sensitive, and know if it's God speaking to you or not. And they said, um, so they said, it is false. And he said, no. Then they said, okay, tell us. And he told them that this is what God has said, that he has been anointed king. Boom. Immediately. These are people who are already saying that whatever they've said is false. So. And then when he now opened his own mouth and said it, they now started singing, oh, he's king. Hi. Some people can be two-faced, sad. But anyway, God will still use them, Sha. God will still use them to announce their friend. Just now, they said whatever that man came to do is false because they feel he's a madman. And then all of a sudden, when he says what the madman, the so-called madman came and said, they swapped immediately and started singing, Oh, he's king. Oh, he's king. This life. You see, that's just the truth, eh? One minute people are with you, the next minute they're not. And then another minute they're with you. There's some people that would just, they just love to be with you only when you're on your good times. When everything is going good with you. When things are going bad, they will just sign out of you. They will sign out. And so Joram um, started going and dealing with everybody, just like God had said. His own. So you see. Um, people have different destinies and different lives and different processes and different methods that God takes them to the place. There are some people like this one, Jehu, he just got anointed and he just started working or read immediately. But David, he was anointed king. It took him 17 years to get to the throne. Saul was rejected as king, but he took him 17 years to leave the throne. Because in their culture, a king had to die. You had to die before the next king takes over. It's not like they just dethrone you. No. The king had to die before a new king was installed. So no matter what was going on, no matter the terrible things that he was doing... All the times that he was following David and wanting to kill David. And God knew about it. 
God still left him to be roaming around and doing his things that he wanted to do. <laughs> See, sometimes you pray for God to take out some things from your life. You just tell you that, no, don't bother. My grace is sufficient. You see how Apostle, I think it's Apostle Paul who was crying and said there was a thorn in his flesh. And he pleaded with God several times that God should take off the thing from him. And God says, no, I ain't taking off the thorn. My grace is sufficient. I, we, could, we could sit and try to figure out what this thorn in Apostle Paul's flesh was, but you never know. It's just that in all of us, each and every one of us, I believe that there's also that thing that just deals with you. And sometimes I believe that that thing is there just to make you stay in check, to be in reality. So you get to still believe that, oh, you're still human. You know, you like, you're in check. You can't start doing kuba kuba dog fowl kind of thing. Like, you know, you can't become a peacock and just flush, flush your things and flaunt here and there without remembering where God picked you from, where God brought you from, you know, without remembering that you're still human. You know, and it's God that is doing all the things that he's doing with you and through you and by you and for you. You know, you can afford not to remember those things. So it took um, Jehu just hours to become king and to start ruling. Meanwhile, it was taking some people years. It was taking some people ages. Some people, they were anointed. It took them a long time for them to be king. Some people, they were anointed. It took them immediately to become kings. And Don't compare yourself with nobody. You guys are not running the same journey. I read something. They said there are no classmates. There are no life mates. There are classmates. There are schoolmates. But there are no life mates. Because in life, God can just, something that someone will take 10 years to, to get, God can give you one day. It's at his discretion. So you can't afford to be comparing your life with that person's life. I said the next best you want to be is your, is your best. Your next best. I want to be better than what I am today. What can I do to make my life better than it is today? So I want to be my next best version. I'm looking forward to being my next best version. Not the next best, um, who? Not the next best blessing, Chibike. Not the next best, um, um, uh, Uncle Dona. Not the next best, whoever, call it Mam Tipa Melvis. No, I don't want to be the next best Mam Tipa Melvis. No, I want to be the next best Princess Cleeton. That's what I'm looking forward to. What can I do, Lord? Which area can I, can, I, can I improve upon? Which area can I do to be better than yesterday? I told you guys when I started doing videos, go and watch my YouTube videos. I'll be so looking at the screen and I'm thinking I'm looking at the camera because in my mind, when I'm looking directly at the screen, like right now, I'm looking directly at the screen and I'm seeing myself and looking at myself directly. I'm thinking, I'm thinking in my head, that I'm facing you. So we are having eye contact now. No, we are not. As I'm looking at this and having eye contact with myself, there's a feeling of we are having eye contact. But no, that's not how it is. But when I'm looking at the camera, like right now, when I'm focused on the camera of my phone, that's when I'm having eye contact with you. But when I'm focusing on my camera, if I'm not being intentional and telling myself that I am focusing, I am doing eye contact with my audience, I would have the tendency of looking back to the middle of the phone thinking because that's where I feel like there's eye contact. So I started. I was growing. I was, I was becoming better. Now I can focus on the screen and I can focus and I can have eye contact with you guys. And I don't talk and do a lot like go out of the screen and all that so many times like I used to do before. When I just started, watch my videos. So I've been learning. I've been growing. There are some things I couldn't do. There, 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 there are ways I do not even know how to put my phone to get to stand so that I can be talking. Sometimes I used to hold my phone in my hand and then I'm talking and then I'm shaking and all that. I've grown. I'm looking forward to being my next best. I'm looking forward to being my next best. And that's what we all should be bothered about. 
not wanting to be like this other person or that other person. I ain't saying don't have a role model. I ain't saying don't look up to people. But when it comes to actually fulfilling purpose in life, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the perfect example. Because why? Human beings are human beings. They have flaws. They have issues. So when it comes to fulfilling purpose, the perfect standard is Jesus. David is like my role model. I really, really love him. But there are terrible things he did. Because he's human. But Jesus, no mistakes. You're safe having Jesus as your perfect role model. And that's who we should, our focus should be on. It should be Jesus, not people. Because even the apostles had their floors, but Jesus had not. And so he's the perfect example. And he lived here on earth for 33 and a half years to be sure enough to know that he went through a lot of things that we all will go through. And he went through it successfully to know that you too can go through it successfully. Oh, that was the whole idea. He didn't just come here for nothing. He came here because he's not that kind of high priest who does not feel, does not understand what we go through. He does. He experienced it for 33 and a half years. That's enough for someone to be able to feel what you're feeling, to be able to have the experience and confidently sit somewhere and give um, um, advice on how to live a perfect Christian life here on earth while you have heaven in view. So don't compare yourself with nobody. Everybody has it differently. It works differently for different people. We all have different different missions to accomplish here on earth face your mission turn to god and face your mission when help is needed god is going to show you who's going to give you help and the person is going to make the help available in time but face front face your mission say that again with me face your mission and so King of Jeroboam re returned to be healed and Jehoshaphat had to deal with all these people, dealt with all of them. And then he ended up going to deal with, um, with Jezebel, just like God had said. These people used to have watchmen who were looking over the city and they would send people and send people, you know, before the people want to get close to them. They already have information about what is going on so that they can prepare better and all. But this one. They were not getting feedback, so they had to go by themselves. Of course, they were going to their death. So, um, this guy actually revenged. Jehu actually revenged a lot of the kings that died. A lot of people died because of Jezebel and Ahab and all that. He did a lot of revenge for, just like it was said that he was going to do. And then, um, who else was... Um, was also killed. I wanted to see that part of oh Jezebel. And so Jezebel really got herself dressed up. <laughs> Some of us might get dressed up like that and get to our trouble. If you're not in Christ, you might get so dressed up and still go and end up in trouble. See, and Jehu entered into the gate. She said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? She painted her face, tired, tired her hair, and looked out at the window and asked that funny question. And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And then looked out to him, two or three eunuchs, and he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and all the horses, and he throwed her underfoot and when he was come in he did eat and drink and said go and see now this cursed woman and bury her for she's a king's daughter god had already said she wasn't going to be buried so maybe he he sometimes we kind of feel like we know more than god god had already said the dogs are going to leak her up so <laughs> it was not news and it looks like he forgot that part that sometimes we want to obey god but we don't want to obey him fully Partial obedience causes disobedience. But anyway, God saved him for this one. 
it says, and they went and found out there was no more than the skull and the feet and the palms of a hand. And wherefore they came back and told him, and he said, this is the word of the Lord, which he spake by the seventh, Elisha the Tishbite, saying, in the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, this is Jezebel. She was going to be so eaten up and finished to nothing, so much so that they would not be able to recognize her. That's what she did for some people. That's what she did for this man's son when, when the husband wanted the guy's land and then they made that and dogs ate that man up and all. And it had already been decreed and declared that day, from that day that she was also going to be eaten up by dogs. See, when God says a word, it comes to pass. It may tarry, but it would come to pass. It would come to pass. Some, it may happen instantly. Some, it may tarry. And the tarrying might be a week, a month, a year, a decade, a century. It could be like that. But you just have to trust that if God said it, he would do it. I keep saying, he said, let's go to the other side. Even if that boat had to really be destroyed by the storms, all of them, each and every one of them was going to get to the other side. No one was going to die. Why? Because God has spoken. And the power of that word must be effected because when he has spoken the word, he must accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. Yes. So nothing can stop it. And that's why even the apostle, um, is, is it Peter? He was unstoppable. A viper beat him. Everybody was waiting for him to fall down and die. No, he wasn't going to fall down and die because he was a man on a mission. And until the mission was completed, he could not fall down and die. He could not be stopped, not even the stink of the viper, not even the venom of the most poisonous snake could kill him. Of a very poisonous snake, sorry people, could kill him. He just needed a stink of the viper and he was dead. That thing is that poisonous and dangerous. But he was there with the thing on his hand and after a point he shook it into the fire. See who dies. <laughs> when you're on a man, when you're a man on a mission with a vision, with provision from God, you are unstoppable. Do you know who you are? Do you know why God called you? Do you know the purpose for which you were created? Do you know why you're still on earth? Are you aware? We need to know that and hold on to it and trust God for it, you know. We really need to know who God created us to be. We need to know. And that's why I'll come here studying the word of God every single day. To know who we are in Christ. The power we possess. The things we can and cannot do. The things we should and should not do. So that we can live a worthy Christian life here on earth. So that people can see the life we're living and desire to know God. And glorify our Father who is in heaven. People of God, I don't know about you, but there are going to be times where God is going to give you a mission. He's going to give you a mandate. You have to be alert. You have to follow the mission and the mandate to the letter. Because you only be rewarded for what God assigned you to do. God ain't going to reward you. He said reward of them that diligently seek him. When you diligently seek him, you're going to follow his beating. You're going to do the things he wants you to do when he wants you to do them and how he wants you to do them. And that's the only time you're going to get a reward because you'll get a reward. You will not just get a reward for doing stuff. You get a reward for doing stuff the right way and the God way. Yes, child of God, that's how it works. You get a reward for doing it the God way, the right way, and at the right time. And totally and completely, not partially. Okay, people. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. 
Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter, on a chapter in a aka Akkad, your favorite Bible study program and Bible creation program. And tomorrow is going to be 2 Kings chapter 10. Study before time and let's come back here and have a swell time together. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Oh, we got to pray. Father, we thank you for another amazing session. We thank you for bringing us to the end of this today. We pray, oh God, that you're going to speak to our hearts, oh God. That whatever we've heard here, we're going to be able to put it to practice. That it's not just going to be hearing, hearing, hearing only, but we're going to be doers of the word because the blessings come in the doing. So Lord, teach us to be able to live for you and you alone. Let your word be so lived by us that will become living epistles read of men. Because some people might never read the Bible, but our lives will be the Bible to read. Thank you, King of Glory, for in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says a big Amen. See you tomorrow. Have a great week. Go and conquer your world, people. Ciao, ciao.